Hello, John here with the Columbia River Orienteering Club in Portland, Oregon. Do those brown squiggly lines look like a big plate of spaghetti? After this video, they'll make a lot more sense. Contours show two important things, elevation and terrain. Our video today covers elevation, and the next video in the series covers terrain and reading contours. Let's get started. When looking at elevation and contours, there are three key terms we need to understand the contour line, the contour interval, and the index contour. Let's start with the contour line. Imagine you're on a small island in the ocean. The high point of your island is about 35 feet, and it's a few hundred feet around at the water's edge. And let's also imagine you have a really big piece of chalk. Now, imagine yourself walking from sea level up to an elevation of 10 feet. You now walk completely around the island at 10 feet of elevation, drawing a mark behind you with the chuck. You walk more or less in a circle and arrive back at your exact starting position in a few minutes. You've changed direction walking north, east, south, and west all around the island, but you stayed on the same 10-foot elevation line the entire time. Now you walk uphill 10 more feet to the 20-foot elevation mark and repeat the previous process. You walk around the island, leaving a trail of chalk mark. You repeat this one more time, walking uphill 10 more feet to the 30-foot elevation line and walking around and marking what little remains of the island at this elevation. Now you've drawn three lines. Each loop is 10 feet higher than the preceding one, and all the loops are getting smaller as you get toward the top of the island. A bird's eye view of your island is on the right, which is in fact a perfect contour map of your island. So this gives us the definition of a contour line, a continuous line of constant elevation. The second of our three terms is a contour interval. An interval is the elevation difference between each contour line. In our example with the island, the interval was 10 feet. Intervals can be in meters or feet and can be different on every map. On the left is a small scale map from Canada with an interval of 50 meters. On the right is a seven and a half minute map from the US Geological Survey, here with an interval of 40 feet. Sometimes the interval is printed right on the map and sometimes you have to figure it out for yourself. Contour intervals are almost always multiples of five, typically five, 10, 20, 40, or 80. The interval chosen by the map maker depends on how steep the terrain is. Intervals can range from five feet in very flat areas like Florida to 150 or more feet in very steep terrain or on a small scale map. Usually in mountainous areas, the interval is 40 feet. Now let's have a look at our third key term, the index contour. Here we see a map of the Emmons Glacier on Mount Rainier. Notice that every fifth contour is printed in a bold or heavy line weight, and most of these bold lines have an elevation printed on them. A little quick math shows us that these index lines are 200 feet apart. So, knowing this, we can determine the contour interval if it's not printed on the map. To find the interval, we take the vertical distance between index contours and divide by 5. Here, 200 feet divided by 5 gives us a contour interval of 40 feet. Now let's figure out the elevations for each contour line between 4,400 and 4,600 feet. First, we need to figure out the contour interval. What is it? The interval is 40 feet, 200 feet between the marked index contours divided by five. We add 40 feet to 4,400 and we have the elevation of the next higher contour line. Let's do this for four more lines. Add 40 feet onto that line, we get 4480, 4520, and 4650 for our final line. Once you know what the contour interval is, you can find the elevation of any point on your map. Here's how to do it. What's the elevation of Camp Sherman? Pause the video here if you want and take a minute to answer. First we need to find the contour interval. Here it's 40 feet. 200 feet between the index lines divided by 5 gives us the interval. Looking below the camp, we see the nearest index contour is 9,400 feet. Next, we count contour lines going up until we reach the camp. It looks like there's one. Knowing that the interval is 40 feet, we add 40 to the index contour of 9,400, 
to get an approximate camp elevation of 9,440 feet. Another way to think of it, 5,000 more feet to the top. What's the contour interval here? Well, the index lines are 50 feet apart, and dividing 50 by 5 gives us an interval of 10 feet. What's the contour interval on this map? The index lines are 100 feet apart, and dividing 100 by 5 gives us an interval of 20 feet. That's about it for contours and elevation. Let's summarize what we've covered so far. All the points on a contour line have the same elevation. And because of this, contour lines can never cross each other. Index lines are printed in bold, usually every fifth line. Some, but not all, index contours will have an elevation actually printed on them. Dividing the elevation change between the index lines by 5 gives you the contour interval. The interval is the real-world change in elevation between each contour line. Sometimes this is printed right on the map, and sometimes you have to figure it out on your own. And finally, when you know the contour interval, you can determine the elevation of any point on your map. Well, that's it for contours and elevation. Hopefully you've got a good handle on this now. Keep on watching our next lesson to learn how to read contours to visualize the actual terrain features. If you found this video helpful, we'd appreciate a thumbs up and a like on YouTube. Thank you.